congratulations. You've now completed high school level chemistry. We all learned a lot this year. If there's one thing that every one of us picked up on, it's that when you start looking at things on a really small scale, such as atoms, things start to get a little counterintuitive and seem to go against everything that you've ever been taught, ever. Well, if you thought this class was the epitome of your confusion, think again, because it really is true. Tiny things get confusing. Imagine a world where something can be dead and alive at the same time, or where simply watching a TV show changed the way the plot planned out. That might seem bizarre and, frankly, quite ridiculous to think of, but if you happen to be an electron, or any other elementary particle, that'd be everyday life for you. This strange world where nothing actually makes sense is called quantum mechanics and has proven to be the bane of linear thinking everywhere. So what exactly is quantum mechanics? Well, Wikipedia, the ever-great oracle, defines it as the science of the very small, the body of scientific principles that explains the behavior of matter and its interactions with energy on the scale of atoms and subatomic particles. We all know about protons, neutrons, and electrons, the constituents of atoms, but things get even smaller than that. For example, protons and neutrons are made out of elementary particles called quarks. Elementary particles are the smallest things that can't be broken down into anything smaller, and they're classified into groups called fermions, which are generally particles that make stuff, and bosons, which are generally particles that do stuff. Quantum mechanics is simply the science that describes how they all interact. It arose roughly around the beginning of the 20th century, and unlike relativity or calculus, which were largely pioneered by one person, it took lots of brilliant scientists with lots of weird names and weird ideas to get it off the ground. One of the most well-known names on that list is Erwin Schrödinger, who proposed a now-famous thought experiment in 1935. Schrödinger, who actually looked like the doctor, set up his thought experiment as follows. Take a cat, put it in a box with a vial of poison that has a 50-50 chance of either breaking and killing the cat, or of doing absolutely nothing and allowing the cat to live. We don't know whether the cat survived our experiment or not until we look in the box. Schrodinger said that until we check, the cat is simultaneously dead and alive, and that our viewing of the system causes this strange balance of possibilities to collapse into a single reality. The difficult thing about understanding, or even believing, what Schrodinger says is that he equates the act of observation with the existence of an outcome. He essentially denies that a physical world exists on its own and says instead that it is tied to the actions that occur within it. Ironically, when he first conceived it, Schrodinger intended the simultaneous death and life of the cat to point out the absolute absurdity of one of quantum mechanics theories. However, since then, advances in the field have led physicists to begin to accept Schrodinger's attempt at critique as an actual scientific possibility, and Schrodinger has essentially become famous for what he was trying to disprove. One of the earliest experiments into the quantum world was called the double slit experiment. It consisted of a tiny electron emitting device, a screen with a small slit in it, and a detector screen behind that. As would be expected, when you shoot an electron, which is a particle, through the slit, the detector lights up with impacts that line up with where the slit is. However, when you use a screen with two parallel slits instead of one, something strange happens. Instead of getting two lines on the detector screen, you get something more like this. This puzzled physicists until someone realized that the pattern of collisions picked up by the detector could be explained if the electrons being emitted were acting more like waves instead of particles. The wave passing through the two slits would essentially create two smaller waves, the interference of which would result in the strange detector results. We can see how wave interference would make this pattern by using things that we already know travel in waves, such as light. Here, a laser is shining through a piece of metal with two small slits in it, akin to the electron version of this experiment. On the piece of paper at the other end of the laser beam, we can clearly see the interference being caused by the wave properties of the light. This strange behavior of electrons led physicists to conclude that the electron acts as both particle and a wave. This relationship between how waves and particles act became known as the wave-particle duality, and basically means that sometimes particles act like waves, and sometimes they don't, and sometimes waves act like particles, and sometimes they don't. This property has been proven to apply to everything from electrons to photons and even to matter. One of the interesting things about quantum mechanics that you might have noticed from our discussion thus far is that, in some ways, certain aspects of it require us to look for them in order to exist in the first place. Numerous theories and experiments into the field almost seem to require that consciousness seek them out in order for them to be there. It says that nothing has to exist until we look for it. It claims that you can show something to exist in a pinpoint location, and then simultaneously prove it to be spread out over a large area. Not only does quantum mechanics apply to our everyday lives, by its technological applications that came in the form of LEDs, lasers, computers, and even the camera I'm using to film this, but it forces us to question the nature of, well, reality itself, and how we know what we know. If you weren't completely befuddled by some of the things that I've just said, you probably weren't paying close enough attention. Quantum mechanics, perhaps more than any other field of science, acts in ways that go contrary to how we have been trained to think. 
Everything that I've presented here has been pretty watered down and summarized. But if you actually want to learn more, it's very easy. This is currently one of the biggest areas in physics, and there's plenty of easy-to-read literature available. Anyways, have a nice day.